Good morning. I welcome you all to the Easter worship service. Let us begin our worship service by singing hymn number 672. 672. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. <laughs> Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love, and we are his children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins, and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son, who died for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. God, who is both power and love, Forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by God's Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Almighty God, who through your Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened the gates of eternal life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of his resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Now, let us listen to the word of God. A reading from the 14th chapter of Exodus. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who had been travelling in front of Israel's army, <coughs> withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And all that night, the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them, and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army, and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing towards it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen 
the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground, with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew chapter 28 verses from 1 to 10. Glory to Christ our Saviour. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and other Mary went to see the tomb, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the gods shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. Praise to Christ our Lord. Today, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. We celebrate it with hope as our world is crying for life. In our country and across the world, death toll is rising up. While we celebrate Easter with hope, we need to pray for all NHS staff, care workers, shop workers, farmers, teachers, lorry drivers, delivery people, cleaners, refuse workers, postal workers, and all other key workers. They are doing their best sacrificially to give us life and hope. They translate the meaning of Easter through their generous and loving actions. As we are staying at homes and follow social distancing, to slow down the spread of coronavirus, the Easter celebration invites us to see the empty tomb and experience a new life. Today's gospel passage says that after the Sabbath, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb when the new day was dawning. They saw an angel by the tomb. The angel said to them, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised from the dead. The angel comfort, comforted them and gave them a hope to see the risen Christ and to receive a new life from him. This empty tomb means that Jesus is risen and is living among us and we should not look for him among the dead. Unfortunately, we human beings look for life in things 
that have no life in them. Our human world turns to money, power and war. But our world never finds love, joy and peace in these things. Instead, our world becomes spiritually empty doom. Yet, we continue trying these things in the hope that they will give comfort and peace. Easter breaks that type of searching things for life that are dead. Easter calls us to give up the old life and accept new life. Easter calls us to get out of the tomb of self selfishness, greed, prejudice and hostilities. And Easter invites us to get out of pride, envy, anger and invites us to accept a new heart, new birth and a new person. Now, as we are invited to the empty tomb, we must remember that there is always a hope. The Easter story is one of taking complete defeat and turning it into absolute victory. It is the story of turning victims into victors. Jesus was once a victim, victim and now he has become the victor. Easter is our annual reminder that with God there is always a hope. That is the good news for today. Our world needs a hope to overcome the fear of death. This morning, I want to be practical. The ripple effect of the resurrection of Jesus has changed our world in a positive way. The resurrection is still offering our world a hope. We must believe that if God can bring a dead man back to life, then God can handle any man-made situation. Christ has shown us that the way of the cross is not the way of death. It is the way to life and glory. Let us therefore take up our daily crosses and follow our leader and Savior Jesus Christ. May the example of Christ, who sacrificed himself on the cross and rose, rose again, strengthen us. Those who live in Christ have no reason to fear death. For them, death is gain. It is the beginning of life. It is the golden gate to eternal life. Dear friends, today in this celebration, we meet the risen Lord to contemplate his resurrection. This is the secret of our joy. Here on earth, the Lord Jesus experienced suffering and death. This morning, he invites us to the land of resurrection, to the empty tomb where there is no more death. And he invites us to the home of, home of the Father to participate in the eternal banquet as his brothers and sisters. The celebration of Easter is a call for us to change our life as Jesus' disciples changed. After the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his disciples who were at first paralyzed with the fear of being arrested as followers of Jesus, filled with power, ambition to proclaim good news to the world. The disciples to whom Jesus appeared were suddenly transformed from a band of despairing men into a brigade of daring missionaries. Everywhere they preached, the good news of the resurrection of Christ, the power of Easter began to work in people's lives. When they began to work with the power of the resurrection of their master, their despair began to give way to hope. Darkness began to give way to light. Hatred began to give way to love. 
and sorrow began to give way to joy. From the empty tomb, the risen Lord offers the world a true way of life with an assurance of the resurrection of the body after we are dead. And also our risen Lord offers to all believers the hope of new life here and now. For example, every time we suffer a loss, we are disturbed by an illness or fail in some enterprise and we die a little bit. But if we believe in the presence of the risen Christ, we will discover new dreams to pursue, new challenges to take on, and new reasons to try again. Every time we are overwhelmed by problems, discouraged by disappointments, or beset by worries, we are dismissed in some way. But if we believe in the real presence of the risen Christ, we will find that the impossible becomes possible and the unreachable becomes reachable. We live in this assurance, assurance of things unseen. We live in this hope, hope of things to come. May the celebration of Easter help us to receive a new life and a new hope to live a genuine Christian life, a life of love and generosity, a life of humility and kindness, a life of service and selflessness, a life of joy and peace, and a life in abundance. Amen. Now let us pray. Let us pray to the Father, who raised his Son to life, that we might live forever in him. Christ, you are risen from the dead. We are risen with you. May our life never deny this eternal life, this peace and hope and joy. Praise and glory to the God of life, who is stronger than all kinds of death. Alleluia. Strengthen your church to be the body of Christ at work in the world. Heal our divisions and imperfections. Make whole this visible body so that it may truly ref reflect his glorious body. Give grace to ministers of the gospel in proclaiming the message of the resurrection. We pray for all church leaders on this holy day. For Paul, our priest, for Kevin, our bishop-elect, and for Mark, our primus. We pray also for all clergy in this and other Christian churches throughout the world. May they be further inspired by the joy of the risen Christ to lead and strengthen us in our faith. Lord of the risen Christ, hear our prayer. We pray that the joy of the resurrection may be known throughout the world, that those who are ignorant of the love of Christ may feel his presence and share his risen life. May all human endeavor become part of the new creation and the life without end. We ask for your blessing, Lord, on your sad, sick and troubled world at this time. We lift before you the whole of humankind, your children, that the Easter message of joy and the conquering of death and evil may this year more than ever bring hope to a world in crisis. Lord of the risen Christ, hear our prayer. Give grace this Easter time to heal the wounds of differences among our families, friends, and neighbors. By the offering and acceptance of pardon where there has been wrong, may we know together the fullness of the joy of Easter life. We pray for our families and friends and our neighbors. We thank
thank you for the spirit of community being shown by so many at this time. People helping those less able or fit than themselves. We pray that you would give all of us the patience and discipline to do what we need to do to minimize the effects of the virus. We pray for those households where there is tension, argument, or even the risk of abuse and violence. Be with those who need your love most, Lord. Lord of the risen Christ, hear our prayer. Grant to all who suffer the knowledge of where true healing is to be found. Heal the hurt and broken bodies. Give peace to the troubled minds. Restore hope to the grieved and anxious spirits. Lead all human sorrow through the pain of the dying Christ to the joy of his resurrection. We pray for all those who are sick at this time. So many worldwide with the, with the effects of the coronavirus. We pray for any known to us particularly anyone who has become very unwell with this illness. We give thanks for those who have had the illness and are recovering, including several members of our two churches. We also give thanks for those working to care for the sick at this time. Give them the skill, energy and courage they need, Lord. Lord of the risen Christ, Hear our prayer. As we rejoice in the resurrection of Christ our Saviour, we pray for all who, like him, have suffered the death of the body. We pray that the power which brought him from the grave may give them a part in his victory over death and in his risen life forever. We pray for those who have left this life now, and for those left bereaved. We think of any known to us at this time, either those who have died recently or perhaps longer ago. Help us to remember on this special day that the end of life on this earth is not an end, but a beginning of something far greater. Lord of the risen Christ, Hear our prayer. We now spend a few moments in silence as we bring our own concerns and worries before you, Lord. Risen with Christ and filled with new life, we praise his people on earth. And we close our prayers by saying together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We meet in Christ's name. Let us share his peace. Peace be with you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the wine and the work of human hands. It will become the cup of 
of our salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, author of all beings. Your power sustains, your love restores our broken world. You are increasing unceasingly at work, from chaos bringing order and filling emptiness with life. Christ, raised from the dead, proclaims the dawn of hope. He lives in us that we may walk in light. Your spirit is fire in us. Your breath is power to purge our sin and warm our hearts to love. As children of your redeeming purpose, freed by him who burst from the tomb and opened the gate of life, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the old company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Praise and thanksgiving be to you, Lord of all. For by the cross, eternal life is ours, and death is swallowed up in victory. In the first light of Easter, glory broke from the tomb and changed the women's sorrow into joy. From the garden, the mystery shone clear that he whom they had loved and lost is with us and now, in every place forever making himself known in the breaking of the bread, speaking peace to the fearful disciples, welcoming weary fishermen on the shore. He renewed the promise of his presence and of new birth in the Spirit, who sets the seal of freedom on your sons and daughters. Before he was given up to suffering and death, recalling the night of Israel's release, the night in which slaves walked free and suffered with his disciples, he took bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, it is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup, he offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, this is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom, made one with him. We offer you these gifts, and with them of ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving Spirit, there may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love, and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us, who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body, to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love, until at last, in your new creation, we enter into our heritage, in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Apostles and Prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters, living and departed. Through Jesus Christ, with whom and in whom, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen.
Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Christ, our Passover has been sacrificed. Alleluia. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. Alleluia. Alleluia. We give you thanks, Lord, for you are gracious, and your mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Lord, you have nourished us with the Easter sacrament. Fill us with the spirit of your love, and unite us in faith, that we may be witnesses to the resurrection, and show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us receive God's blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work, working in you that which is pleasing and good. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace, to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, in the name of Christ, Alleluia, Alleluia.